Hello and welcome to Dateline Lagos on Channels Television. I'm Ayo Tunde Balogun. Coming up on the program, Governor Sanwolu preaches continuous synergy for a nation's economic growth. Governor Sanwolu promises to pay new minimum wage and State Ministry of Works, Infrastructure, Wealth Creation and Employment and others brief on one-year achievements. The Lagos State Governor, Baba Jude Sanwolu, has asked the Nigerian Economic Summit Group to continuously push for synergy between the public and private sectors for a collective agenda of service and benefit to citizens. Governor Sawalu made this comment during the Nigerian Economic Summit 30th Anniversary Public Lecture and Founders Forum held at the Lagos Business School in Lekki. Take a look. Governor Babajide Sawalu is here in Lekki for the Nigerian Economic Summit 30th Anniversary Public Lecture and Founders Forum organized by the Nigerian Economic Summit Group. The summit is focused on the national interest of the people, reflecting on the past and reimagining the future. LBS and NES have a lot in common. As we convey today to mark the 30th anniversary of the Nigerian Economic Summit, we will focus our discussions on the imperatives for accelerating economic growth, and development in Africa. Nigeria stands poised to provide leadership, scaling up the continent's transformation through institutions, investment, integration, industry, and innovation. NES at 30 offers a platform to reflect on the progress and impact of the Nigerian Economic Summit 30 years after its maiden edition in 1993. The shared vision of our founding fathers to create a platform for constructive engagement between private and public sector leaders is, an, is as relevant today as it was at inception. Beyond the usual slogan, how do we truly diversify Nigeria's economy, reduce dependence on oil? How do we foster a business-friendly environment devoid of the usual sloganeering? Thirdly, how do we truly develop a much-needed infrastructure base in a coordinated and nationwide approach? devoid of staccato approaches. Educational reimagining. How do we repurpose our education system to focus on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in a world that is inexorably going AI? How do we encourage tech entrepreneurship and innovation halts, and how ultimately we address the youth board, the unemployment burden that Nigeria carries. Governor Sonolu, who was a special guest at the event, commends the NESG for providing Thank a platform for the nation's Thank economic you. growth as a champion of the gospel of collaboration in Nigeria. From the very beginning, the NES was conceived to bring together public and private sector leaders in our country in an ongoing dialogue to shape, influence, and create a thriving, competitive, and enduring, successful Nigerian economy. So, the bridging and the connection work that the NES has done so exceedingly over the past three decades is in fact a natural outward manifestation of what we call today a DNA. Every occasion on which NESG converses a gathering is an opportunity to image the kind of country we want for ourselves and for our children and to pilot the journey from where we are to that image or re-image future that we all see or the world aspire or we all think about. Imaging and envisioning is a central part of the work that NESG has been called to do. We are not yet where we want to be, in my view, but we are also not where we should be. We must continue to set goals to inspire ourselves, 
to do better and to be better as a nation. We may not always achieve the targets according to the ambition timelines, but that should not be an excuse for not trying. And so I know firsthand the powerful brand and the convening power of NES, one of the most recognizable, credible, and influential institutions in our country, yesterday and today. The gathering here, therefore, today is a testament to that. Those of us in government can readily testify to how seriously we, had, we regard the ideas and resources put forward under the NES umbrella. I think that there is an opportunity here for you to do even more as champions of the gospel of a collaborative Nigeria. One of the ideas that the public sector needs to improve on, especially internally, is synergy. Having various actors on the same page, overcoming what I call silos impulse to pursue a collective agenda of service and benefit to the citizens. I think NESG can scale up its relevance here and we'll all work with you at achieving this. 30th anniversary logo. Now time to launch the 30th anniversary logo of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group. Nigerian Economic Summit has been running for three decades and has lived up to expectations, becoming one of the most influential institutions, enabling the most impactful reform that the country is experiencing. Governor Babajide Sanwolu has given an assurance that a suitable minimum wage will be announced soon for Lagos state workers. Governor Sanwolu made this comment at the 2024 May Day celebration held at the Mobolaji Johnson Arena, Oniko. The Lagos State Governor Babajide Sanwolu arrives at Mobolaji Johnson Arena, Oniko, for the 2024 May Day event. He moves around the stadium to appreciate different unions in attendance. This year's Workers' Day celebration comes with a different feeling for workers in Lagos owing to the current economic hardship in the country. Despite that, workers across all sectors are here to voice out their concern, especially on the issue of high cost of living and not forgetting the measures put in place by the state government. It is rather unfortunate that workers have to protest and fight for everything before their demands are met. But in Lagos State, we are enjoying the full support of Mr. Governor. Our mandate is to emancipate the workers from the shackle of injustice, oppression and deprivation. We in Lagos State Council have been in the forefront in fighting for workers' welfare and improved condition of service. The era of modern day slavery, monkey day work, baboon day chop, is no longer acceptable. The situation in the country now is perilous. Workers are the hardest hit by the economic challenges. The cost of living is very high. The current minimum wage is of no value anymore. The palliative measure has not solved the equation. On behalf of all members of the state public service, I extend our heartfelt gratitude for your prompt action in implementing the wage award for all public servants in Lagos State. It is on record that Lagos State was first to implement the wage award and we know that you will have done more but for certain exigencies which we also share with you your commitment to prioritizing the welfare of our people of your people is perfectly aligned with our core belief of placing citizens first which is in line with the theme of this year's May Day, people first additionally we wish to express our gratitude to you and all those involved in the diligent efforts to recalibrate the salary structure for workers in the state public service. This long-awaited correction addresses a long-standing issue that has been part of our collective struggles since 2011. 
I must commend the sagacity of the Public Service Joint Negotiating Council, particularly the Labour side in particular, ably led by my brother, Comrade Ramon Balogun. However, we have also found out that grade levels 15 and 16 were not adequately included. We appeal that this be quickly looked at, and we trust Mr. Governor to look at that. For the Lagos State Government, the workers' concerns are to be expected, given the situation of things, but has also initiated intervention programs to support the people. As a responsible and responsive government, the administration of Mr. Selebo, the Governor of Lagos State, has remained resolute and committed to frontally addressing these numerous challenges. And as such, he has put in place various policies and programs to cushion effects of the current hardship. The implementation of the 35,000 wage award to public servants with effect from December 2023. The implementation of flexible work, two days working from home for the, the grade levels 1 to 14 and one day work from home, grade level 15 to 17. Implementation of the 40% rebate on statutory phase payable to Lagos State Government by public servants on the application for physical planning permits, allocation of government housing schemes, and allocation of land in government schemes. It will interest you to know that our amiable and proactive governor recognizes the fact that the workforce represents the greatest assets of the state. In appreciating this fact, Mr. Governor has graciously approved the purchase of vehicles for the allocation to heads of agencies as well as substantive directors on grade level 17 in the public service. I think this deserves a round of applause. <laughs> While preparations and arrangements are in top gear to ensure the vehicles are handed over to the beneficiaries before the end of May 2024. At this junction, let me state that we are not oblivious of the fact that there are still pending issues to be resolved with the labor issues regarding the improvement of welfare and well-being of staff in some agencies. Nonetheless, let me seize this medium to ensure the labor centers of our continued commitment to chat a way forward in addressing these issues in the best interest of the state government and the affected staff. The workers of Lagos State have long been acknowledged for their dedication, unique sacrifices and diligence. The continued demonstration of these attributes have contributed to the multifaceted development which our dear state had experienced and continues to enjoy. I commend the leadership of the organized labor for their maturity, understanding and steadfast support for the administration of Mr. Babajide Sonwolu and Dr. Obafemi Amzat in the governance process. I call for continued understanding and progressive collaboration as we continue in our collective endeavor to prioritize the welfare of workers and all residents of Lagos State. Governor Somolu speaks of the economic challenges facing the nation, commending the dedication to work and gives assurances of a sustainable minimum wage. I honor the invaluable contribution of all of you across all sectors contributing great things to our state of aquatic splendor, to the state that we call the center of excellence, the commercial economic nerve center of our country, for your tireless effort at building this great state. I would say that from day one, I've been a welfareist myself, and I stand with my people. I share in their pain. I understand their challenges. And I want to say to you that you are the reason that we're here and you are the reason for us to wake up every day knowing fully well that you are with us and you are behind us. Together, we have achieved significant milestones at improving the working condition and ensuring that there is fair wages and benefit. Understanding that a thriving workforce is pivotal to a society and to our state's prosperity. I want to encourage us to understand the importance of standing together in solidarity and supporting one another through these difficult times. We will continue to uphold these principles and to strive to create an environment where all workers 
feel valued, feel empowered, feel safe, feel prosperous, feel wanting, and feel inclusive in everything that we do. As we look forward to the future, I want to reaffirm our commitment to building a more inclusive and equitable society in which the interest of the workforce receives the attention that it deserves. I want to assure you that your welfare is paramount to us. Lagos, you can rest assured, will give a wage award, will give a minimum wage that indeed will take you home. A wage that will not leave you on the bus stop, a way that will not leave you at Motor Park, but a way that will take you to your respective home. The event was rounded off with a mag pass by different groups. The Lagos State Government says the mantra of People's First will continue to be their watchword to ensure every worker is properly catered for. And finally on the program, the Lagos State Government says a total of 172 roads has been completed across the state. Now, the Special Advisor on Infrastructure, Mr. Olufemi Daramala, made this known at the ongoing 2024 Ministerial Press Briefing held at Alausa in Ikeja. While it gives assurance on the completion of the new Massey Children's Hospital and other ongoing projects, other ministries also gave account of their scorecard in the last one year. Another set of head of ministries and agencies converge on the Bagauda Kalto Press Center, Alausa, Secretariat, Ikeja, to take part in the ongoing 2024 ministerial press briefing. I agree with me that the Ministry of Works and Infrastructure. The initiative, organized by the Lagos State Ministry of Information and Strategy, provides an opportunity for the public to know what has been achieved in the last one year of the administration of Governor Sonwo Lu and his deputy, Kadri Hamzat, in their second term in office. The Ministry of Works and Infrastructure takes the lead in reeling out their achievements, part of which is the completion of 172 roads. From May 2019 to date, the Office of Infrastructure under the leadership of Mr. Governor Babaji de Olushala Sonwolu and the Deputy Governor Dr. Obafemi Hamzat has succeeded in completing 172 roads, which translates to about 177 kilometers of road network using an average of 7.3 meters of baseline width. Additionally, 253 projects are ongoing, which in completion will translate to an additional 298 kilometers. We intend to complete before the expiration of this administration. On bridges, it is important to note that we have completed a length of about 2.51 kilometers, while another 3.13 is currently ongoing at different parts of the state. Okwebi Mende Link Bridge, an approach road in Ikeja, local government area. The 3.89 kilometers of Jota Okwebi Link Bridge and Approach Roads is a critical link initiated by Governor Babajide Sonwolu in January 26, 2022. When completed, it will ease congestion in the axis by providing a direct route between Okwebi, Mende, Maryland, and Ojota, thereby enhancing connectivity and reducing travel time. The project is making steady progress, has achieved very good completion stage, and is scheduled to be completed this year. We have the project rehabilitation and upgrading of ATL Saleke Ekpe Expressway. The ATL Saleke Ekpe Expressway transverses from Ekpe Junction to Abraham Adesonya. 
It has a total length of about 47 kilometers. And its conceptualization was executed in phases. The phase one runs from Ekwetsi Junction to Eleko Junction, about 18.6 kilometers. The second phase, which runs from Eleko Junction to Green Spring School, is another 18.6 kilometers, while the third phase gets us to Abraham Adesoya, all totaling 47.88 kilometers. It's gratifying to mention that we have completed phase one of the project, while the phase two and three are nearing completion and will be delivered very soon. The infrastructure roadmap for health sector is being championed by the Office of Works with the primary goal of revamping health facilities across the state's primary, secondary, and tertiary healthcare system. The prototype of the new, remodeled, and upgraded healthcare infrastructure in the state was planned to conform with key elements of global standards. The construction of a 280 bed general hospital in Ojo has generated about 180 jobs and about 39% completion. Also, the 150 bed new Masses Street Children's Hospital is progressing as scheduled and has been proposed for completion by the, before the end of this administration and has so far generated about 130 jobs. Mr. Governor has also approved the construction of a 1,500 bed psychiatric hospital and reabsorption center in K2A journey. As part of the administration of Greater Lagos agenda, we invested immensely in the upgrade of public health facilities. We have delivered three mother and child centers, MCCs, at the Tiosa, Igondo, Bagagri, and Epe. Next is the Ministry of Wealth Creation and Employment which says 859 million naira was disbursed to over 1,000 micro, small and medium enterprises, most especially to those in the informal sector. The achievement of the state transfer during, during the period under review, implementation of the monthly conditional cash transfer, CCCT, to 11,386 households in 12 elder local governments, namely Apapa, Amu Odofi, Ajeromi, Ifelodun, Agege, Badagri, Ekbe, Ikorodu, Ibeduleki, Lagos Island, Shomolu, Ifakojai, and Alimosho. The implementation of the CCT program in the above 12 local governments has culminated in disbursement of 1,346,030,000 naira only. 3,000 SMEs for a three month training program per cohort on business growth and expansion training across key industries such as cosmetics, manufacturing, and the rest. Post-completion grants loan as seed capital to support business establishment and expansion. While 5,000 artisans for a three-month training program per cohort in areas covering hospitality, auto repairs, fashion, cosmetology, technology, and post-completion grants, loans, and seed capital to kickstart trade. In 2023, we disbursed 859 million to 1,271 MSMEs in the state. The support helped these businesses grow, creating 51,822 direct and indirect jobs in Lagos State. In the area of tertiary education, the state government says 849.6 million naira has been spent on scholarships and bursaries to 10,066 students in its institutions. In consideration of efforts to improve reading and learning culture, the Lagos State Minister of Tertiary Education intervened in the, in the renovation and rehabilitation of 40 public libraries across the state in the last quarter of 2023. Over 300 secondary school libraries have been digitalized to date. To date. The libraries were equipped with books, furniture, computers, and state-of-the-art facilities for a conducive environment to promote reading habits among students. I am delighted to share with you the stride made by Lagos State Scholarship Board in streamlining the scholarship and bursary publication process through automation. The transformative step has enhanced efficiency, 
transparency and accessibility, ensuring that deserving students have equitable access to educational opportunities. This process has removed the cumbersome, tedious, and very tiring manual application processes that characterize the board's formal process. Furthermore, I am pleased to announce that our journey towards full automation of scholarship and bursary administration is well underway as Mr. Governor has approved it. And the Commissioner in Charge of Economic Planning and Budget, Mr. Opa George, says the state contributes 20% of Nigeria's GDP and has recorded a quarterly total revenue size of 433.408 billion naira budget performance. The GDP Lagos ranks at about the seventh, you know, as we speak now. Uh, we contribute, I think, a minimum of over 20% of Nigeria's uh, GDP. Um, you'd find that over the period of uh, review, uh, certainly under uh, Mr. Governor's tenure, you'd find that even uh, the capital has moved, I think, from about 12,000 to uh, 17,000. So, you know, uh, you know, so we're, we're moving in the, in, the, in the right direction. I think uh, our GDP has grown from about 27 to 41 uh, trillion. So everything shows that our indices are climbing in the, in the right direction despite all the, uh, the shocks and all the uh, uh, problems we've, we've witnessed uh, with, within the, the, the country, the economy, and the country, and the world at large. The Lagos State Ministerial Briefing is a platform that has been in existence for over two decades, and the state government says it will be sustained to continuously give account to the public. And that's the program for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Ayotunde Balagum. Always remember to be the best that you can be, obey all state laws, help keep our environment clean, and please stay safe. Till next time, is bye for now.